a time has come to once again answer life's most savory question. Whose cuisine reigns supreme? This is Iron Chef America. But there is one more ingredient to this battle. Our secret ingredient. Garden! Almonds! I gotta tell you, I've been looking forward to meeting you for a long time. I'm a huge fan, John Wick. And so far, you haven't disappointed. Is that the dog? He likes you. Me? I'm more of a cat person myself. All right, everybody. Let's welcome Mark DeCoscos. <laughs> All right, who else do we have joining us, Stephanie? So the next person that I would like to introduce is a professional actress, entrepreneur, wife, and a mother of three. At 14 years of age, she was crowned Miss Texas Teen, and that same year she starred in her very first movie. Since then, she has starred or co-starred in 37 productions and also serves as a vice president of the food company Culinary Champions. Now, before we meet her, let's watch a quick clip of some of Julie Condro de Costco's best work. And I, uh, uh, uh pick, picked it up. For you. Thank you. Well, uh, Kevin. Fact. Lead conducts electricity. Yo. Uh, 
All right. Join me opening Julie DeCoscos. And I think we have one more guest, right, Stephanie? Yes, we do. Now, this final person that I would like to introduce <laughs> probably looks a lot like Mark and Julie because she is their daughter. Our next speaker is only 13 years old, yet she has made her professional acting debut in the film titled Oh Lucy. She has also performed in many different school and summer stock productions and performs in acting workshops in her free time. She is quite accomplished for her young age and is a very talented actress. So let's take a look at some clips of Nolani Dacascos' biggest roles. You gotta let go. <laughs> let go, baby. Let go. Goodbye, Mama. I loved you so much. Safe gun. I never saw any gun was totally safe. I suppose not. Keep practicing. Okay. You missed. Right then, Sid, Noe, the Costco's. All right, well, looks like you have everyone you need now, Francis, and I know we are all very excited to see this fireside chat with Mark, Julia, and Nolani. And so I will leave you all to it. Thank you so much, Stephanie. All right, well, here we are. This is uh, just such a big moment for me, and I think for everyone here. So thank you again for coming at the entire the Costco's first family of Hollywood, in my opinion here. <laughs> thank you, Francis. Th Thanks. Thank you all for joining us. You know that life is crazy, so thank you for taking the time and, and making the effort to just spend some time together. Thank you so much. So I want to, oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So I want to go down and get to know each of you a little bit and then talk more about you as a family hoe, okay? So we'll start with you first, Mark. <clears throat> you told me once that you were discovered here in San Francisco. Tell me a bit about that. Yes, um, okay. I, I have a few things to share. And um, one of them is, yes, my acting career started in San Francisco. Um, I'll keep this short, but I was born in Hawaii, raised somewhat in Colorado, and then we moved to Hamburg, Germany. And then at 17, I had seen Jet Li in the movie Shaolin Temple and thought, oh, that character, that's me. You know, martial arts, philosophy, spirituality, Buddhism, I'm gonna go be a monk. So at 17, with my 
mom and dad's permission. By the way, my mom is right here. And just side note, in terms of breaking cultural barriers, oh, I'm standing up already. Here we go. <laughs> Here we go. Um, that's my mom. She's, um, she and my father were my first Kung Fu teachers. Wow. And to say in terms of breaking uh, cultural barriers, my mom was um, a martial arts competitor, forms fighting and weapons. And for five years straight, by most of the people that had the say, she was ranked as the number one female martial artist in the United wow. States. This is back in the 70s. And she was the worst, first, <laughs> <laughs> she was the worst hugger, but big heart. <laughs> she was <laughs> the first woman on the cover of Black Belt magazine. Wow. So breaking cultural barriers right here. Go mom! <laughs> but yes, um, I, I was discovered in San Francisco and so made it to Taiwan, didn't quite make the monk thing, another story. Made my way back to America. And now um, I landed after all these tumultuous, crazy things in San Francisco teaching martial arts at my mom's martial arts studio. Lunch break, I'm going to lunch and two gentlemen approach me. And I think, Patrick Lee, are you here somewhere? Patrick, Patrick and I know this one of the guys, Chris Lee. He went on to become a huge producer in Hollywood. He, at the beginning of his career, and the makeup artist for the show that they were working on, which was uh, directed by, please help me, the director of the Joy Luck Club. Wayne Wang. Wayne Wang. Wang, thank you. Chris was helping cast for uh, Dim Sum shooting in San Francisco. And um, so I'm walking and these two guys approach me and you know, very nice. And they said, you know, um, we're, we're making this movie. Would you like to uh, audition for it? And I said, absolutely not, but thank you so much. <laughs> well, why not? Because I'm not an actor, okay? Well, don't you want to be in the movie? Um, no, thank you. I'm not an actor. <laughs> okay, will you at least take our number and consider it. Thank you. So I take the number, I go to lunch, come back, and that afternoon I talk to mom, and I said, mom, these guys want me to audition for this movie. She goes, go do it. I said, but I'm not an actor. She goes, you don't know that. She says, you thought you were gonna be a monk. Didn't quite work out, right? <laughs> Oops. <laughs> um, you know, the writing thing could happen or not, and I really feel uncomfortable with you going into the military unless you go in for the right reason. So, life is a big adventure, roller coaster. You don't know how it's gonna happen. Go audition and just see how you like it. So, I took mom's advice. I auditioned, and they had me improvise and do these things. I had never done any theater whatsoever. No plays, just was not interested, not my deal. I got the part. Three days later, they call me, they invite me to the show. Cut to, first day on the set, near the Dragon Gate, Chinatown, right? Come to set and I wore these, like even tighter than these, tight black little pants. And I don't know why, but I had red shoes and I have pictures of it. It was like, red, I was wearing red boots and this tight little top. And I talked to Wayne Wang and he says, okay, I want you to improvise this scene. There's a girl over there, she's your, you know, she's the actress. Um, um, she's going to be your girlfriend. It happened to be Joan Chen. I'm like, oh, God. <laughs> I, like, I like acting already. <laughs> I want you to go over there, and she's learning German. You already speak German. I want this to be very different. I want, I'd like you two guys to have a conversation in German. You haven't seen each other, and then make out. I'm like, <laughs> um, so, you know, never gone to drama school at that point. Make out. Like I said, um, Wayne. Um, uh, like kiss? He goes, yeah. I said, okay, um, how? He goes, I'm like, like French kiss? Is that how you kiss your girlfriend? I'm like, yeah, you know? I, I didn't know Joan, of course. So anyway, we do the scene, we improvise in German, we get to the kissing part, we start kissing. I'm having a great time. <laughs> Don't know about Joan, but I'm loving this. And I hear somebody yell, cut. Of course, I don't even know what cut means. I keep going. <laughs> like, cut, cut, stop, Mark. I'm like, oh, oh, okay. Anyway, that was my introduction. And 
after that, not just the kissing part, but the storytelling and the collaboration with all these other people, I thought, this is really cool. Because, you know, I, I was a fan of movies already. You can touch people's hearts like a good monk should, I think, by storytelling. You can inspire like Jet Li and Bruce Lee had done with me. You know, you can inspire people and educate and entertain. And I thought, and sometimes you get to kiss Joan Chan and it's like, I like acting. And so that's how I started. Thanks, Mom. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Mark. Now, Julie. Yes. Uh, my first time ever seeing you was in a Wonder Years, actually. Did you Dream Girl. I was all like, <laughs> dang, Kevin. I did eventually speak. <laughs> yeah, you had some amazing parts. Now, how did you? You were also you were also a pageant queen too. I was. I grew up um, in Texas on a cattle ranch in a little town with wow. one stoplight, and um, you know, not a lot of excitement happening there. And I was very very shy. So when when I was a little bit older, we moved to San Antonio, and my mom put me in a beauty pageant so that I would learn to be able to speak in front of people and have a little more confidence and some poise and, and all that sort of thing. So um, I entered the Miss Texas um, teenager pageant and I ended up winning in wow. a homemade dress my grandma made me. Like it was very, I had no idea what I was doing. I wasn't a professional pageant girl, but um, it was great. And I did a lot of traveling with that and speaking and it led me into modeling and commercials and being a spokesperson for different um, companies, and then into acting. Wow. So I'm thinking Wonder Years happened soon <laughs> after the pageant then? No, I was actually 19. That was 19. Playing 14. I did that, <laughs> <laughs> I did that for a long time. I, that was actually um, one of my niches into acting, was that I looked really young. And I don't look as young as Fred Savage. Um, but. Um, I was able to play young and be, um, I'd already graduated high school when I was 16, and so I was already um, considered an adult on the set, mm. so I could work adult hours and, um, and play, you know, young high school parts. So um, I did that quite a bit. Um, at that time, I was on another show called um, Parker Lewis Can't Lose, mm. and I also yeah. left that show to be on a series I did called Erie, Indiana. Yes, all right. Yeah. Now, Mark talked about how he loved the collaboration. That's that one of the things that he loved about acting. Was there anything about acting that you really loved when you first started? I think that's actually my favorite part of acting is the people you meet and the experiences you have that you would never get to have if it weren't for the entertainment business. I mean, I've been on a set where I learned a soft shoe um, from Dick Van Dyke. I got to do a fight, my first little bit of a fight scene with Chuck Norris. I learned how to shoot a gun from Clint Eastwood. I got to travel all over Italy with Mel Brooks um, doing a movie with him. And so if I weren't for the entertainment business, when on earth would you have a chance to, to do these things and to go to exotic, amazing locations and to meet the love of your life and, and um, work with your daughter? I mean, when would you get to do that? Not in just any career. So it's really been a blessing. Wow. So Chuck North talked you to fight. Clint Eastwood talked you how to shoot a gun. Yep. And you traveled away with Mel Brooks. That's yep. An amazing life. It's been and you amazing. met the love of your life on set too. That's right. That Which, was me with dark hair in that clip, in case, in case you didn't know when my hair was long and black. Well, the two of you met at set, which resulted in the lady between us, or between <laughs> you two, right here. So, um, Nelly, when did you first start acting? I first started acting around when I think I was like nine. I did my first movie called Oh Lucy with. Josh Hartnett. I feel so bad I forgot that. <laughs> Josh Hartnett, and I played his daughter in the movie called Oh Lucy. And it was a really great experience for me because that was my first movie, just getting into acting. So I really enjoyed that experience a lot. It was good for me. Do you like acting the same reason why your father and your mother liked acting, or is there another additional reason besides the collaboration part? Well, I think my dad said storytelling is probably my favorite part. Like. Mm. When you go into acting and in a movie or anything like that, they give you the story that you get the amazing chance to really tell to people that really experience, I don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> you really get to just tell a story, which is my point, which is my favorite part. And also I think 
putting myself in another person's position. Like when you play different characters, you experience different things and how different people live and stuff like that, which I also think is pretty, pretty amazing. All right, very cool. Now, here's the question I need to ask you. When I watched that scene where you had to watch Julie here mm -hmm. basically die. Yeah. And, and I'm thinking, all right, so if I was in the scene with my real mom and my real dad and I had to witness that, that's a really hard scene to do because these are your real parents here. Mm -hmm. Was that hard for you to do? Because it was hard for me to watch that knowing that you guys are all <laughs> real family here. For me, well, in the moment, it seemed kind of heavy on my heart, but you know, once you finish the scene, you're just out of it totally. And I'm just like goofing off with them and just giggling and, you know, really enjoying the moment and that time. So for me, it wasn't too, it wasn't too tough for me because I knew it was just acting. Wow, very cool. You can separate that. Mm -hmm. For 13, you were very dramatic up there. What did you learn how to like, was it this natural where you can just bring your emotion out like that? For me, it, because it, I keep saying for me, because it actually was my real mom and real dad, I just put myself in the position, like if they were actually dying, which is really tough, how would I feel and how would I express my emotions? So that's basically, I transmitted that into mm -hmm. the acting and that is basically what happened. In the car scene, is that how you and your dad goof off? Kind of. <laughs> that all seemed was pretty, the, that scene was pretty real. It was just us messing around, having a good time. Very cool. Mm -hmm. So now what's it like growing up as a family that's an acting in Hollywood, which is basically the land of, of imagination and storytelling? What, what's it like as a, as a whole family unit to be able to be in that type of industry together? I think... You want like, any one of you guys? Okay. You go, girl. I think it's really something special to be able to have these opportunities. <laughs> tell us, tell us. <laughs> to have all these great opportunities with my family and learn all these amazing things and go to these all and go to all these amazing places with very cool people. Like my mom said that I wouldn't meet unless I had an acting family. So we shot the driver the scene that she did the mm -hmm. played the emotions in, uh, in Thailand. Wow. So she went over there and um, we shot that movie in 13 days. Jeez. That crying scene was uh, both of their first day on set. At, so at 3 wow. a.m. <laughs> so we'd worked all day and then 3 a.m. First, you know, um, yeah, one of the first scenes or the first first day up, they're asked to, you know, just emote and cry and over. And the thing is, um, it's difficult anyway to do it once but then to do it twice, and then to do the seventh take and eighth take. Wow. And I have to say that from my point of view, I mean, Julie was extremely accomplished before we had kids, and had, but hadn't worked professionally as an actress for 20 years. Oh my God. And Stressful. no way, this was her first leading yeah. role. And so I knew they could do it, but you know, you, you, you tell the director, I lay my life on the line for this, they can nail it. And then I'm going, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I was I was so proud of him because you know it, 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 you have a you have a cast and crew around there. They bring us all the way to another country, and then on the first day you've got to deliver yeah. a crying scene over and over. And I think uh, you know um, what Noe um, was talking about about you know relaxing in between the scenes. Not only did she relax in between the scenes, she was relaxing in between takes. Wow. Which you have to do because imagine. If you're doing a, an emotional scene like that for three or four hours, which is what it takes sometimes, if you hang on to that emotion, by the time they get for your close-up, you're already drained, and then you're like, I have no tears left, I, I can't do it anymore. So it's really important, and they both did incredibly well, in my opinion, was to you know, push the spring light, you know, suppress it, and then on action, bam, let it out, you know, and then leave it relaxed in between the takes so that you could suppress it again for, for the actual filming, you know, and it takes, my opinion, an immense uh, amount of focus and concentration and trust, trust, you know? So um, for 13 years old, uh, daughter or not, I thought, wow, that's pretty darn impressive. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? And for, for, for Julie getting back out after 20 years. So, yeah. so yeah, I'm just saying it's, uh, it's really nice to have people you can share your joy and passion and creativity with that speak the same language, you know, in the house. And when we get auditions, 
we practice with each other. Mm. And it's really nice, you know? And um, we have two boys. Uh, she has two older brothers, a 17 and a 19 year old. So I can say that at least the three of us in the family read, you know? <laughs> <laughs> no, because no, you know what I'm saying. The other guys, they do what they have to for tests, but these two actually read. I'm like, okay, finally, some readers with me. <laughs> what was your experience like? Just jumping into the hole? You know, it was really petrifying um, because I hadn't been working, like he said, for so long. I had, you know, taken this lap, uh, lapse to raise my kids um, and then started a food company, which I'm still running. Um, so it had been a while and it felt um, really daunting. And I originally said no. Um, but Mark kept saying, look, why not? We get one life. You have one chance. Like, jump in. It's a great opportunity. We can all go to Thailand. We'll have so much fun. You know, you can help Noe. Like, there was all of these reasons why I should do it and not that many why I shouldn't. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, and I try to lead by example mm -hmm. as much as I can. And I always tell her, like, say yes. You know, if you have a chance yeah. for a new opportunity, say yes. Jump in. Dive in. Take a chance. See if you like it. See how you feel. And, and so I wanted to practice when I preach. And then on the other hand, I wouldn't have done it if it wouldn't have been opposite Mark because we hadn't been on film together for 24 years. And um, the chance for us to all three be together uh, was kind of a once in a lifetime opportunity that I didn't want to miss. But he's not only a great actor and writer, but he's a great director. And even though he wasn't the director on the movie, he directed me and, and I trust him so much that I was able to really just relax and be present. And he would tell me just the right things at just the right time. And he knew when to back away when I didn't need help. You know, like, she's got it. She's finding her groove. Okay, she's okay. She gave me the sign. I'm like, Cut it. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Marriage short hand. Um, you know, and, and we're so in the zone that way after so many years together that it was really a cool act of trusting your mate. And, um, and then now we have all these memories, like you do with any movie, like you watch a clip and you're like, oh, remember after that, we ran into that monkey or, or we went and had boba from that place or, you know, all the different fun things that happen behind the scenes. Like we have that with her. We have like a scrapbook, you know, video scrapbook of a whole life we had. And that, I mean, those are memories and, and moments you, you, you can't pay for. That's true. So you told me, you told us that um, you wouldn't have done this if Mark wasn't playing opposite. So Mark, how did this happen? How did, how did you come across this opportunity to cast your entire family? Um, okay, so I'm, I was up in Vancouver doing a Hallmark movie, my second Hallmark movie. And I have a blast doing Hallmark movies. Um, and during my lunch break, uh, a friend sends a script, uh, somebody that I worked with in Thailand uh, maybe 11 years ago. And all the scripts of his that, I, that I'd read thus far were just excellent. But I was trying to focus on my role right then and there. So I, I, t I emailed him back and I said, you know, uh, which um, I'm excited to do this, but I should probably wait until I'm finished this, with this role next week. And then I emailed him back. And then of course, I had an hour and something before I went back to set, so I got right back into the script, right? That script that I told myself I wasn't going to read, and it was great. And there was a daughter role and a wife role, and I just went, ding, ding, ding. This could be something really cool. Um, so I emailed him back and started the process of him possibly, you know, you know, casting Noe and Julie. The problem was the director had written it for his own daughter, oh. and she was going to drama school in London, and this was her dream role. Oh. So, yeah, yeah, so, you know, it got a little touchy. So I said, okay, I mean, I mean the, the fact is, I said, which I am sure your daughter's talented and she could nail this. Just so you know, and this is, well, this is just the truth. Uh, we don't have a, a big budget. I mean, the joke was, for, between us, that the budget we had on our driver was two days of craft service from John Wick 3. <laughs> So, yeah, so, so we didn't have a lot of time for prep or anything. I, I said, you know, I, but I, the, the reasoning was with Julie and Noe, we already have a history together. We have a lot, our own personal lives to draw from for the roles. So if we can harness that and put it to your words, you know, we're going to cut out um, the rehearsal time that we don't have anyway. And we can also play with improv and all that. 
And so it, you know, it took a couple months for him to come around to that because he had to talk to his daughter. You know, he had to talk to his daughter and (laughs) the mom and all these things. And, you know, apparently they came around and they thought it was the best idea as well, because when it came to actually shooting, you know, they cast Julie and Noe. But, you know, that's the one of the wonderful things about movie making. It is so personal and social and collaborative and technical and artistic. And if you're lucky, filled with passion. You know, all these elements combined um, on, a, on a good day. Did the daughter ever get a part in the movie? Uh, she ended up, she was going to school in London. She ended up not coming to Thailand while we were shooting. Oh. I think, you know, this is just projecting. I think it was probably, she was okay with it, but it, emotionally it's hard. You mm-hmm. know, you have a dream role and then, you know, you're not in it. I mean, we know these stories because we're actors, you know, mm-hmm. most of the time you don't get the roles you want. You audition, mm-hmm. you audition, you audition, you train, and then for whatever reason, you don't get it. So, you know, we all three understood. Right. And we, I mean, we understood. Right, right. So, Noe, what was your experience? This is one of your major roles as, a, mm-hmm. as starring in there. You were actually pretty much the star here and for us <laughs> purposes. You were the sole survivor at the very end, right? Yeah. So what was that like being, um, Pretty much starring in the first major role there. At first, when he told me, like my parents told me, you're going to you're going to be the lead in this movie. I was kind of nervous and really wasn't sure if I could if I could do it, if I could pull it off. And but once we got to the set and I met all these great people and I really started feeling the role in the script, I kind of got into it and started having so much fun with every scene that we did. I was just ecstatic, enjoying it all 100%. So I think really, I loved every moment of it and it was really good for me. I really enjoyed it a lot. She learned how to drive a car and shoot guns. I mean, instead of going to school, Thailand, how do you it was that? crazy. At 13 years old, she's driving a Beamer. Come on, <laughs> yeah, shooting zombies on <clears throat> Halloween. It's like, it was it was great. That's an awesome life. Yeah. Very cool. What are some of the things, do you, do you have any plans to do this again? Or is this a once in a lifetime thing like Julie said here? Me? No, all of you. To, to have another... <laughs> oh, to work to yeah. together again? Yeah. I don't know. We'll see. I mean, you know, Mark and I, the, one of the clips from this movie was um, a movie we did together where we met called Crying yeah. Freeman. And um, we shot that in Vancouver. And we've been approached about them doing a sequel to that movie. Um, so I think if something like that came up, we would definitely act again. And then we have another project that we're kind of collaborating on, um, you know, where I'm helping him put together a, a series treatment and he's, you know, the story's based on his May life. May I humbly say, more than helping, uh, I wrote a synopsis based on uh, my teenage years. <laughs> Born in Hawaii, but raised by Kung Fu parents, mom and dad. Uh, in Hamburg, Germany, and their Kung Fu school, my mom's Kung Fu school, was in the heart of the second largest red light district in Europe. Oh, thanks, Mom. <laughs> so, so we have a lot of adventures, uh, and it was, a, it was a crazy life. So I've been working on this series, and um, I feel very confident about the content, but apparently I'm not nearly as good a writer as Wifey here, because when she sends it in, people start responding. So, <laughs> so, so you know, um, back to, uh, you know, changing yourself and, 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 you know, what actions to take. Um, I think you've done a really good job, Julie, because, you know, not professionally trained as a writer, but she wanted to take a stab at it because she believed in the story mm-hmm. and it's, it's working out, you know? So I, again, to the effect of, you know, when there's opportunities there, be bold, be brave, be okay to maybe fail, but give it a shot. And she did that. And uh, so maybe so, we'll be producing partners yeah. instead of <clears throat> acting together again. You know, who knows? Be awesome. We'll see. No, wait. Now, this is early on in your career. You think there's something that you want to do long term or is this something you're just trying out right now? I probably will try to do a long term and hope that I will succeed because I really like acting and I think I, it can maybe do good for me. So maybe in the future, go to 
do more jobs, maybe go to acting in college, and maybe just see how that goes and see where that takes me. Do you have yeah. any, uh, can you give us any sneak previews of what you might be working on right now in Hollywood? Hmm. Or is that under contract <laughs> still? <laughs> All right, we won't talk about that. <laughs> what do you think, Mark? Should we take questions yet or? Sure. We got some time, a little time, but I'm yeah, feeling we're yeah, gonna have yeah. a, quite a few questions here. Do we have a microphone here, out there? Microphone, please. <laughs> Delinda. Or a really loud voice. Or. <laughs> Thank you. So who has the question here? Who's? Let's go to Uchka first. Uchka. <laughs> Miss Asian at Global 2018. <laughs> please stand up. So it's just kind of personal, but how did you ask your wife out? Ooh, how did you ask your wife out? <laughs> yes, I want to hear this too. <laughs> you know, we actually got engaged in San Francisco. Yes, oh. we did. Wow. We've had a lot of San things. Francisco, Bay Area and then rocks. We got, in, we got engaged on New Year's Eve. Wow. Here in San Francisco. Happy anniversary. And, Thank you. And then we ended up having our first child on New Year's Eve. Yeah. Wow. Isn't that funny? Wow. Life's full of coincidences. But how did I ask her out? I think, you know, we were, we were co-stars, and so I, I think it was not really that I, we I, asked each other out. You know, it was kind of, it was during Crying Freeman, my character was supposed to kill her, but she wants to make Nookie first. So character's like, oh, okay. <laughs> you know? <laughs> and um, I don't. Actually, I don't know. Remember, I think we were just eating dinner together all the yeah, time. Yeah, I mean, we had, you know, Cheki Kario, Masaya Kato. Um, <laughs> Yoko we, Shimada. Exactly. Shimada, all, you know. Just cool people around yeah, us. Yeah, so we were always with cast really and organic. crew together. So it just kind of formed. Wow. Yeah. On set Magic. romance. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, were you guys dating before no, the filming? Or no, no. We no. met on a plane coming to Vancouver to shoot the movie. Huh. We sat next to each other on the plane, like, "Hey, hey. co-star." <laughs> that was that was it, and that was been 25 years ago. Wow! <laughs> oh my God! Yeah. 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 Hollywood success story. I know Hollywood success story. My they do exist. <laughs> yeah. All right. Do we have another question here? Uh, yeah. Whoever we got. This question is actually for Mark's mom. Did Mark have any difficult teen or tween years, and how did you discipline him? Especially Moving on. Your background. Moving I'm on. Need a little bit of parenting background here. Let's give the mic to him. <laughs> difficult years. This is going to be about an hour long. I wasn't now. listening to your question. I'm so sorry. So, what did you ask me? Oh my God! The worst oh thing God. I. Could. Oh Lord! Did I ever? No. <laughs> to be truthful, Mike was a perfect son. I have two sons, and um, I really never grew up because my two sons kept me really young, and they have a sense of humor that's absolutely embarrassing for me <laughs> because they seem to get a lot of joy out of embarrassing me. <laughs> <laughs> I can remember Mark when we used to go to the movies and maybe we would go a little bit early and the stage like this would be empty and I'd be sitting here and he, he'd want to perform for me. So in a public movie theater, he would go up on stage without being invited and, <laughs> and do Kung Fu. And I'd be going, oh my God, Mike, will you please come down from there? And then a really embarrassing, horrible thing he did to me. <laughs> Thanks, Jen. We were in a full theater with people. And Mike, we get seated, and Mike says, Mom, do you want popcorn and this and that stuff? And he's okay, sure. <laughs> and so he gets up, and he leaves, and he goes, comes back with all this stuff. And then he goes into his acting. He pretends that he's mental. <laughs> <laughs> and that he's gone out to get his mother's popcorn and a, and a Pepsi. And he's going, 
Mom, don't be embarrassed. It's your son, Mark. I've got popcorn and a Coke for you. And I'm going, oh, God. And I'm telling the people around, really, he's not that. He's acting. He's making a joke of all of this. But Mark was always full of jokes. And when you get my two sons together, I have no chance. <laughs> None whatsoever. But to show you how much I love my son, when we lived in Los Angeles, he used to be a bouncer at a club called The Palace. And sometimes he would come home, I should say more than sometimes, a lot of times, he would come home at 2 in the morning. And he knew I'd get up at 4.30 and 5 because I teach early. And he'd knock on my bedroom door. Mom, are you sleeping? Are you sleeping? Now, mind you, it's 2.30 in the morning. I'd say, Mark? He said, Mom, would you go jogging with me? <laughs> I'd say, Mike, it's 2.30 in the morning. He says, yeah, but I'm, I need to talk to you. And so I'd say, he said, we'll go to Dupar's. I'll buy you pancakes. And so I said, OK, Mark, let me put my jogging clothes on. So numerous times you would see mother and son jogging down the streets of LA at 2.30 in the morning to Dupar. And I never, you know, if that was the time my son wanted to talk to his mother about whatever was bothering him, that's the time mother would listen. That's what parents do. I love you, Mark. <laughs> All right, another question. Hey, uh, my name's Brian. I have a question for you, Mark. Hey, as you mentioned in, early in your story that, you know, you're just thrown into this position that, you know, you, you achieve your overnight, or pretty much like overnight success really quickly. But we all know that to have that like longevity career, to be successful for so long, what was your mindset from when you were first starting as you were progressing to the next part of your career? How did you stay hungry for so long? Like 24, 25 years, dude, that's absolutely amazing. What was your mindset like? Well, thank you. Thank you. Um, you know, the thing is, uh, yes, I, I got my first uh, movie role before studying acting, but I didn't get my next break um, as a lead until nine years later, mm. you know? And that was then going into um, drama in college, taking professional acting workshops, studying Shakespeare, training with mom, working out, trying capoeira, doing all these other things. Um, the way I try to stay hungry is really to breathe, because when you breathe, you have a chance of being grounded. When you're grounded, you can actually have a chance of being aware. When you're aware, you see how many amazing people are out there, you know? Uh, I think Jen was talking earlier today about um, wanting to be in rooms with smarter people. Well, I think for me today, I have no problem with that. <laughs> so thank you. <laughs> you know? but, but you want to be in rooms with people that inspire you and maybe have a different sensibility and a different opinion. Because if you are breathing and have an open heart, you can possibly learn and be open to be swayed to something different and see it from a different perspective. You know? So for me, um, I, and my mom knows and Julie knows and my kids know, I'm not the guy that wakes up in the morning and goes, oh, it's a great day. I'm not that guy. I'm that guy that goes, oh, here we go. And I have to figure out how to inspire myself. So I read tons of books and I watch, I watch people that, are, that have mastered their crafts. I, I see what it takes for them to get there. Uh, I still take acting classes. I do improv. I fly to New York and do I've been studying with Patsy Rodenberg, a Shakespeare teacher, for over 15 years now. And in addition to my parents and my capoeira teacher, Ms. Amen, she's been one of the most profound teachers, um, not just in acting, but in martial arts. Because, you know, to, and, and this is the thing, I've studied Shakespeare for 15 years, but I, I got a role to play in a Shakespeare play, uh, Shakespeare in the Park in LA last year, but exactly when I did John Wick 3. So I couldn't take it. I, had, I actually got the role and I had to turn it down to do John Wick 3, which is great, <laughs> but I still want to do my Shakespeare. But 
to stay inspired, you have to go out sometimes and find things. When you're younger, everything's new, so it's fresh and vibrant. As you get older, you've lived. So what, what can you do, and I think it's our responsibility, what, is our, what can we do to go out there and find things that inspire us and keep us passionate, you know? Whatever that is. You know, the great thing about the internet, you have access to all these worlds outside of our own. So for me, I listen to talks. I, I, I talk to as many people as possible, you know, standing in the store line or wherever I can. You know, that's why I love, I love places with well, a walking culture because all of a sudden you're walking and you're waiting at the light or whatever and you can strike up this conversation and everybody, in my humble opinion, has something to teach and something to learn, you know? So I, 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 I stay hungry to learn, and by learning, I stay passionate and inspired. But it's a challenge every day for me. That's absolutely amazing. You stay hungry for 25 years. Um, and it, I mean, I, I'm really inspired by that story because I read a lot of stories about like Kobe Bryant as well, how he's performed, Kobe Bryant, how he's performed really high level day after day, year after year. And the same story that you just said, your answer is very similar to his story as well. You put in the work when no one sees it. You know, and that's how you, that's how you achieve such a high level of success. So congrats. It's a lot Thank of you. discipline too, I have Thank to say. You. He's one of the most disciplined that's, uh, people. Let's try Samantha over there. The in the brown, Samantha. Yay. Thank you for that. <laughs> Hello. Hi. My question is actually for Mark. Um, well, actually, first of all, me and my grandma used to watch Iron Chef all the time. Thank and you. the greatest part was that suspense where you go like, Iron Chef. Anyway. <laughs> Thank um, you. So Good I have, job. I have a, actually, I, I have a better one coming. But I have a request and a question. Okay. So my first is the request is, can you do that live real quick? Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> what's the ingredient? What's your ingredient? Okay. You have to can, give, oh, give yeah. me a secret ingredient? Um, salmon belly. Salmon row. Salmon row. Let's do is, that. Is that what you said? Uh, belly, but let's do fancier. We're at the row. We got salmon row. Salmon row. Salmon row. So, you know, as an actor, I go salmon row. How do I feel about salmon row? How does how does the chairman feel about salmon row? Ah. Oh. Today's secret ingredient is <laughs> salmon roll. <laughs> One version. <laughs> okay, lastly, my question is, and I want an honest answer, who was your favorite chef there? Oh, wow. My honest answer is that I did not have a favorite Iron Chef because depending on what the theme was or the ingredients, they were all fantastic. I mean, I, I can say that if, if it had anything to do with fish, Morimoto was just amazing. But a, a lot of the judges made fun of Bobby Flay for his sauce, right? That green and orange sauce because he uses it on everything. He uses it on everything because it tastes good on everything. Whether it's French toast or tacos, it worked. It was crazy. I mean, I'm like, oh, he's doing that again. Oh, it's really good. You know, I'm like, so, you know, every, every, they were the real deal. Yeah, 12, 13, 13 years, 13 seasons, a couple hundred episodes. And I'm proud to say that never once did we stop the clock. What you see, uh, those dishes made in, in 60 minutes is all for real. Um, and if they ever released uh, Iron Chef America After Hours, the unedited version with people cussing and this and that, it would be possibly even more entertaining <laughs> because you, you can feel the energy, right? We had 11 cameras going on, 11 cameras, and, and six chefs just going crazy and everything was improvised and spontaneous. I mean. I wasn't competing and I would get nervous, you know? So I, I, I love that show so much and the people involved were just wonderful. They were wonderful. 
Uh, sorry? Did you finish all the dishes that they had? You know, usually the food was so good, I would only try to have one or two bites, even if I loved it, because many days we'd shoot two episodes in one day. So for me, that would be 20 courses. Yeah. Tw <laughs> 20 co I know, it sounds fantastic. But, 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 but one day we had lobster and, 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 and Kobe beef. So steak and lobster, 20 courses of steak and lobster. I mean, that, that's a lot for anybody, right? Well, okay, maybe not. <laughs> but, but, well, you know. On a side note, he always would stay in the hotel above the 10th floor and never took the elevator. Like that was part of oh. walking to work and walking up and down the stairs wow. and trying to get his workouts in so that, you know, you don't end up coming home with heart disease. <laughs> <laughs> and, and they didn't have to, you know, tailor the suits for me again. <laughs> All right, we are out of time, fortunately, but they'll still be around for the after party so you guys can mob them. <laughs> during that time. But I want to give another round of applause to the DeMarco's family. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Thank you guys. May I, may I tell one little story, one more little story real quick? Yeah. Just because my mom is here and it's like a mom, son, rites of passage story. I promise it's not X-rated too much. <laughs> I'm, I'm joking. It's not, it's not, but may, may I, may I tell a story? Yes. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Um, and this is, this was huge for me because, you know, what I find in our culture right now is that the, the rites of passage for some people seem to be getting a driver's license. Um, if you're fortunate enough to be in martial arts, it could be, you know, ranking and, and all that. Um, for my life, it was certainly martial arts because I had two martial arts parents. But when I was 16 years old, and I grew up in Germany, so I was never bigger than this. And the, the, my dad and mom put me on the, our fighting team, our senior fighting team. That means that when we went against the guys, they could be of any age, of any weight, of any size. Wow. And I thought, wow, I'm really honored. I must be pretty good. And oh no, I'm fighting Dolph Lundgren every weekend, right? That's, and um, uh, my first time on that team, fighting the weekend, uh, we fought against uh, a team from Berlin. And these guys, imagine five guys that actually looked like Dolph Lundgren when he was 25. They were like square jawed, super handsome, built, tight white uniforms, you know, the black belts that, are, that have been so used, they're kind of gray and fraying. And I thought, wow, these guys are magnificent. Oh my God, I gotta fight them. You know, it was just terrifying. So, packed audience, we have, I don't know, a couple thousand people in the Alsterdorfer Sporthalle. And um, all the audience, their team, our team, a couple of our fighters go up first. It's five against five, individual fights. A couple of our guys go up, at that point, we're about even with the score. And my dad then looks at me, who's gonna go up next? They send this other giant up there. And my dad's looking at the last three guys and he goes, Marco, he's yours. And I'm thinking, should I be happy about this? You know, like, okay. In my mind, I'm, I'm cussing my dad out because I, I, you know, I just didn't really wanna be there at that Moments, you just fear, okay? So, I go up, salute, salute, take your fighting stance, bam, and fight. Right. And it's kind of like one of these. <laughs> I go, back, he moves out of the way, back. I hit. <laughs> right? He gets the point. The referee says, I can take a moment to wipe my face off because it's filled with blood. I turn around. Mom's there. Cleans my face. I'm shaking. Okay? Now, you can ask mom afterwards if this is how she saw it, but this is how I felt. Okay? <laughs> I'm like this, and I'm going, Mom, I don't think I can go back out there. <laughs> you know? I can feel the, the tears welling up. I'm look. I'm, I'm feeling it right now, just thinking about it, <laughs> you know, because it hurt, but I was freaking scared. 
I was scared of going back out there because he already got one. And I'm thinking, we have, what, two or three more minutes? I'm so dead. You know, I'm tiny and he's huge. He's strong. I'm not so strong. I did have fear and I was fast, right? But I thought there's no chance. So I'm looking at mom and going, I, I don't think I can do this. What does mom do? She cleans my face, right? Puts her hands on my cheeks and then goes, <laughs> right? <laughs> and she looks at me, she goes, you are the Costco. You get out there and do what I taught you. Wow. <laughs> and I'm like, what the? <laughs> I was so mad at her. I went out there and I rocked. <laughs> you know? So I guess my, again, mom, thank you. But, the, but you know, that was for me um, a, a, a bit of rites of passage. And I don't know if that tactic works for everybody. <laughs> but my mom knew me and she trusted our relationship. And since then, especially as an actor, you know, getting, going to the auditions and getting turned down and this and that, I feel like I'm fighting those giants every day. Well, mom's in my corner and she's smacking the crap out of me saying, get back out there. So thank you, mom. Thank you, guys. I just wanted to share that with you. Woo! Thank you. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Absolutely. Thank you, Francis. Thank you. All right. Thanks, everybody.